In this video, what we're going to do is make a scatter plot from the data that we have. To do so, we are going to um, use the insert function and generate a scatter plot. Uh, so the first thing uh, we are going to need to do is to um, select all of the data that we actually have and uh, by uh, using shift and right arrow and then control down arrow we can select all of the information that we have. Um, at that point scroll back up so we'll keep everything at the top of the screen we can uh, go to the insert tab at the top of the page and uh, your screen may look a little bit different than mine because there are different versions of Excel but somewhere along this top tab you will have a, uh, an option for choosing a scatter plot. On my particular uh, system it's going to be this little image of a scatter plot um, and of all these options I just want the one without any uh, lines in it and if I click on that uh, then the graph will show up. And now this graph is a, um, a graph of all the height and weight information. So in a very simple sense, um, the 53 is plotted against the 190, uh, this 59 is plotted against this 100, and so forth. Uh, you can see that the graph does not look very good, and we're going to have to clean it up a little bit. Uh, one of the things that uh, we are definitely going to have to do is to stretch the data out so it completely fills up the figure which is a fairly standard process that you would do in graphical representation. Um, having all the data bunched together like this um, all the way over on the right hand side is, uh, is something that makes it more difficult to understand what's going on since largely this looks like one gigantic blue blob. So to, uh, to adjust the axes uh, what we see we're going to have to do is uh, select uh, the labels down here in the x-axis uh, and then uh, there will be options up here for formatting uh, the kinds of things that we're working with. Now by double clicking on these uh, labels uh, at least in my version of Excel uh, we have an option show up on the right hand side of the page uh, which gives us options for the minimum maximum value for the x-axis and uh, what we want to do is use a value that is uh, low a nice simple number but involve, includes all the information so uh, none of our data in this particular set of information uh, goes below the number 50 so we'll make the smallest number in this set equal to 50 uh, but we can also use the largest value of 80 because you can see that nothing exceeds 80 on the x-axis uh, so then we'll change that to 80 and move on we don't have to be overly specific about all of the uh, the major and minor units uh, we're not worried about making this thing super pretty one of the other things that you're going to want to do is uh, add a axis title and our primary horizontal axis in this particular case is going to be related to the height because we're working with height and weight data and clearly height numbers along the x-axis from 50 to 80 are very different than the weight information from 0 to 350 so you know how Excel automatically plotted things height which was the first column became the x-axis and weight which is the second column became the y-axis so we know that in our uh, axis title then sh it should say height and put in the, uh, the type of scale you're using inches and then we'll do the same thing for, uh, for the y-axis axis, axis axis title, primary vertical, and then again um, using that this is going to be weight in pounds. And then we can take this um, title on the very top of the 
graph and uh, we can just say all the students <laughs> or relationship between height and weight um, it doesn't matter we could even delete it it's not especially important in this particular case now the graph itself uh, can be manipulated uh, fairly easily um, you can enlarge or drag the graph out uh, one of the things that we're going to have to do uh, to understand the relationship between height and weight is to add a, a linear equation onto the graph that explains the relationship between height and weight. And to do that, uh, you are to click on one of these pieces of data. If you uh, right click on it, uh, you can uh, get a pop-up window that will allow you to add a trend, trend line. Trend line will be a variety of different types of mathematical equations to describe the data. We want to stick with a linear one. And uh, there are two options down here as well. Uh, we want to display the equation on the chart and we want to display the R squared value. Do not use set intercept. Uh, that will modify the math of the linear equation. Uh, so just linear display equation on chart and display R squared value and that would be it and you'll see that the equation will show up here um, it's kind of automatically sloppily produced but we can uh, put it anywhere we want I think we can select it go to home and increase its size there we go and that'll make it a little bit easier to see uh, but this is not an absolute requirement for your uh, for you to do this uh, this is just something you may be interested in so the linear equation shows you um, in basic algebra the linear model that you're probably familiar with from high school algebra class. Uh, this is the standard mx plus b equation. Uh, the slope of this equation is 4.2054. Uh, then you have your x value. And then the y-intercept is a negative 131.36. And it may look a little odd. Uh, because this trend line doesn't seem to be going to negative uh, 131, except it would if we had not adjusted the x-axis values down here. If uh, these values ran all the way back to zero, uh, then you would see that the trend line would actually point uh, toward a negative y-intercept. And then the r-square value, which is uh, something a bit more complicated that we're not going to talk too much about uh, but it is the statistical relationship between height and weight data and explains the amount of variability in the relationship between the two. Now that we have the graph made and it really doesn't matter to what size at this current time that we have it, uh, there's one additional thing we have to do and that is use a uh, a function from Excel, one of the formulas, because this value, the R squared value, is not the standard value that's presented as the Pearson correlation coefficient that is described in chapter one. Rather, an R value is presented. So uh, if we have an R squared value and we want an R value, what we have to do is take the square root of R squared to be able to get R. Right, that's basic algebra and there is a square root function in Excel um, and I'm going to show you how to use that right here um, just place in equals SQRT and that is the uh, the name of the function and you can even see right here uh, the function returns the square root of a number so when we put in the left parentheses all we have to do is stick in this number the R squared value which is point 292 in this particular case and with our right parentheses and hit enter and now we have the square root of the R squared value so that is if we had taken 0 0.54037 and squared it we would actually wind up with a smaller number uh, 0 0.292 and of course it's smaller because we're working with decimal places here these numbers the R squared value and the R value are going to be inserted into the calculated answers sheet on the next page so be sure to keep this information until you transfer it over